that you dated this man because he is very good looking, he's very tall, and that's why you picked him. What would you say to those men in return? You'll probably have to cut this part. <laughs> the most difficulty I have is in being picky. <laughs> in being picky, okay. And not being able to, I suppose, remedy that okay. by humbling myself. I think it's harder to date because there's just too many options you find. Say you go on a date and it goes really well, in the back of your mind, you're just thinking like, oh, maybe I can find something better. And are you ghosting the men or the men ghosting you? Okay, mostly me. Only good-looking men have a chance with uh, women like no, yourself. That is so not true. That is so not true. Like women will apply soft pressure and men will step up. That's my even Instagram, even Tinder, any I think any of them. So it's uh, gives some really illusion. I don't think it's a real something real can be from this. And you met on um, social media or on internet dating app? Social media. Did you? Okay, you're messaging on each other there. Uh, refuses or is unable to buy me $500 dinners. And if you're not a Chad, you get nobody. What do you say to that? Do Chads really get girls? <laughs> and the amount of men who are not getting laid are going to... I, I'm hoping the reaction is, you know, not continuing to dig the deeper hole into in Seldom and what have you. And are you going to be causing any more trouble on internet dating in your four months remaining? <laughs> Most likely, yes. Play with shame on me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we are back for more interviews. I'm David Thorpe, dating coach here in Sydney, Australia. And in today's video, I'm asking women why is dating so difficult? in 2024. Now last year I published two videos interviewing men and women and asking them about dating in 2023 and both videos went to the moon as a small YouTuber and what I noticed was the comments and the engagement was in the thousands and it's still going on to this day so I know these videos mean a lot to you but more importantly the same themes and topics kept coming up in the comments so what I've done for this video is take those themes, those topics, those questions, and take them out onto the street and ask the women as well. In the last few months, I have spent hundreds of hours interviewing both men and women for this two-part mini-series. And stay around to the end as I'm now forming opinions of my own as to what is going on in the dating market and why is dating so difficult in 2024. Let's hear it from the women of Sydney. I honestly have faith that women will apply soft pressure and men will step up. That's my uh, that's okay. the prayer. So tell me about that. How, how are women going to do that? Do you mean on individual men or on society generally? Or? Well, socially and culturally speaking, surely, you know, and the amount of men who are not getting laid are going to... I, I'm hoping the reaction is, you know, not continuing to dig the deeper hole into in Seldom and what have you, but actually addressing the issue and becoming more... I mean, I do want women to be... Do I want women to be less picky? Difficult to say. Yeah, that you have unrealistic expectations. You know, perhaps some of your girlfriends are saying, you know, I want a male model millionaire. Have you heard anything like that from your friends or anything like that? It's just another comment I get from YouTube is women have unrealistic expectations in today's society. Um... Well, definitely me and my girlfriends, we're more focused on, I guess, the connection and the personality. It's far more important to us. But I do get it. There are there are different types of girls out there that want maybe um, maybe just the looks or just the money. Um, but that's where their value lies, and um, that's just that individual, I guess. Um, and, and so with your um, most recent dating situation that lasted uh, two months, that's kind of too short for a situationship which is a new term that I'm becoming familiar with. Um, but if, if you don't mind sharing, like what, what were some of the th key themes where, where it didn't work out? I think I've also changed. I previously thought that I would wanted someone very romantic. I was in a relationship with someone who was essentially my best friend and we were dating for nine years on and off. Wow. Um, but, you know, we fell into the idea that though he loved me, he wasn't able to communicate in a, in a way that made me not suffer, I think. 
Um, he was cold, not because he didn't love me, but because that's who he was. And I think after I dated someone who was very romantic, I mean, near perfect boyfriend, the two months um, thing, it was a little bit stifling and I realized that I actually do want just a best friend and the whole, you know, dinners and roses and flights here and there is not, it's not to stay. I, I would like that from someone I respect, but unfortunately you can only ask so much in the world and I think the amount of men that I respect is, you know, numbered and then the, men of, the number of men that I respect and read, you know, smaller minority and then who read and are funny and share other interests I mean you're, you're really narrowing it down to you know and it's not fat and yada 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 leaves me with about two men in the world I believe yeah me and Zeus oh no that's it yeah it's just us we'll two have to go grab a drink <laughs> they they overlook men you overlook 90% um, of men in society and that women who you know are dressed well you know I assume you know good career things like that you're overlooking 90% of men and your expectations are way too high. What would you say to that? I don't think there's anything wrong with holding high standards to yourself. Um, I, was, I received really good advice from my ex-partner. He told me that I had to write down a list of all the qualities that I wanted in a partner, the perfect partner, and that list meant that I had to become a person to attract that kind of partner. So it's not about finding, writing a list and seeking that, those traits. It's about writing a list and seeking out what you want and how you can attract that kind of standard and partner for yourself. Okay. Yeah. Do you mind sharing your list? <laughs> I will share a few traits. Um, my most important one is um, uh, I would love for a man to be able to be emotionally vulnerable um, and be comfortable sharing his feelings and I'll give you two and the other one would be a sense of humor Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And so you, you were saying there about so this this guy it was it, he was too romantic. It was too much. Is that is that really what it was? Yes, I did think that I wanted. I mean, he would have been any girl's dream boyfriend on paper, and he was definitely mine on paper to begin with. Um, but after receiving what I thought I wanted, I realised that in fact I would like something a little bit more stable. And it, it's it's a very difficult. You know, cost-benefit analysis of many, many traits. And if I want, you know, the father of my children to be romantic, but not somebody that I respect, it's not, it's not clear to me that that is, you know, worse or better than having someone I respect who's there for me all the time, but refuses or is unable to buy me $500 dinners. And I don't, I don't want that at all. No. But after having received it, it's there are just, you know, there are too many things to want on both on both ends. You want someone kind, funny, loves your favourite footy team but also reads and you know has the not only enjoys classical music but your particular brand of classical music and it's just an endless yeah. I think as you get older it's actually quite difficult to listen to new things and read new things and acquire new habits and I don't think I've got the patience anyway to you know I mean, if I, if I lose the next five years of my life to a man, then, then that's, it's not nothing. No, yeah. it's not, it's not. And it, yeah, I do really appreciate the position from women is that, yeah, as you get older, the, the years are like double the value, aren't they? Something like that. Treble the value, and it's, you've got to be very careful with who you put them into, so. Yeah. On the uh, emotional vulnerability, um, a Dayton ideology um, that I kind of used to identify with called red pill, um, it basically is saying that a man shouldn't be uh, sharing his emotional vulnerabilities with a woman because that's not masculine. What would you say to that? Um, I would say bleep this out. <laughs> I will. <laughs> that. <laughs> okay. I really, I truly believe that if a man is able to be emotionally vulnerable, then they are able to grow from a situation like that. If a man is able to share his feelings, then yeah, you grow from a situation like that. If you're constantly avoiding your feelings and if you're 
choosing to run away from your feelings. It comes out in other ways and you'll never really grow emotionally as well through your personality. And listening to the you know the relationship that you had in previous, um, I mean playing devil's advocate, it sounds like you're a little bit indecisive actually with you wanted one thing from your long term ex, you then found it in this new guy and then you didn't want that? Well, I didn't know that I didn't want it until I actually had it, which is very different. I think he felt like I deceived him a little bit because he was giving me exactly what I wanted, the prince's treatment, and I... Um, I mean, it's the fact that I received the, tr the prince's treatment from someone who told me that they were a specific person on the first date, and then I came to realise later that they were different. So, you know, that's also a little bit... I, I think... I'm hesitant to prescribe any dating advice, but to be... Being as upfront as you can while selling yourself, again, fine needle thread, I feel like I was a little bit deceived, even though he really was just trying to put his, you know, best foot forward and Yeah, and if it's difficult. It's and difficult. if a guy is into books he and he's gonna date you, he should actually read those books and not use them to prop up the microwave. That's right. Excellent, excellent. That's right. Excellent. Only good looking men have a chance with uh, women like yourself? That is so not true. That is so not true. Like, I would go for personality who... If a guy has personality and is able to, you know, even if he's not the best looking, if you're able to present yourself well, that's a confidence thing. And confidence is what women are attracted to. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's the number one thing. Of course, women, yeah. So. And you can be like a 10 out of 10 in hotness or attractiveness, but if you have the shittest personality, then just go <laughs> don't, <laughs> like, come here. I'll have to censor that out. <laughs> now, many men who watch my YouTube channel would say, they would make an accusation about you, and they would say that you dated this man because he is very good looking, he's very tall, and that's why you picked him. What would you say to those men in return? You probably have to cut this part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What should I say? Uh, why all this quality of him should be bad? True. Women only go for good looking guys. That's why online dating isn't working for them because it's a very visual place and that they must be at least six foot tall, um, really big down the gym, uh, like real pretty boy. And it's only those men that are doing well on internet dating. And um, women are overlooking the majority of men in society. What do you say to that? Oh, that's a tough one because I do feel like our society now is kind of designed to be very visual and the app is really judging someone based on their looks only. So that one's a hard one, but um, like again, there will be other girls that don't look at that. You know, it's not every single girl. Um, depends on what their value and what they're looking for is it, it really depends on the girl not not the whole not every girl does it. yeah so. and are, are you looking for like a, a pretty boy or someone like that <laughs> like what, what's, what's your requirements honey mine um honestly someone that is probably i can just talk to have conversations probably has the same values as me like traveling and those are probably more important to me than how they treat others. And, but I would be lying if I said I wasn't looking at looks, but um, it's not the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. I have some picture in my head what kind of man I want to be with me. So on this time and um, till now, it's, uh, I think it doesn't change. So okay. it's just, um, I not. Uh, idealize him, but it's really very similar with um, the picture in my head. Uh, and when I began to know him better, I saw many quality that I think is unique for men: empathy, um, those questions who, which he is asking me in the talk time. So all this—it's not just about his tall <laughs> and just about his handsome. Yes. Um, what is it, Chad? Like someone just really confident or no, really good looking. Really good looking. Tall, chiseled. I don't think like it's. A, I mean, 
it looks fade, right? Like, I mean, yeah, you might get the girl first, but you might not get her to stay. True, yeah. true. She may offend someone else. Men generally age, I don't know, it depends, slower maybe? I don't know. Like, you know, David Beckham, like a fine wine. Yeah. I'm hoping that's how I go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, I mean, someone like David Beckham, he's more than his looks as well, right? Like, I, I just watched his documentary. I did as well. <laughs> it's really Netflix, good. But I feel like he has, like, other qualities, like his commitment to soccer, his commitment to Victoria. Um, most of the time. Yeah, most of the time. Um, I think those qualities together with his looks, which I consider like a bonus. If men uh, think that they should be uh, handsome, good looking or something tall, um, I would say they should be uh, kind and interesting as a person. And, and then if they have uh, this the goal to be good looking, okay. <laughs> yes. I mean, a man can't change his face, but there is a lot that he can do with hair, fashion. Um, one of my friends, he's really short, but he does very well with women because he, he goes to the gym. Very, yeah, very good personality. He dresses well. Um, he wears like big trainers, big sneakers. So the, yeah, so he's a little taller. So he's Not doing what he can. Woman needs a tall man, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. True. True. I think height is. It's not something you can fix easily, but you can you can wear like big boots or shoes for a man yeah. just to bring a little bit of height yeah. up. So uh, another one, you can just uh, choose the lady who is not so important. How tall you are. True, <laughs> true. Because not all women are looking for that as well. So yeah. yeah. And asking them, um, what's the biggest problem they're facing with dating at the moment? Oof. I think it's just like all those dating apps actually because they're all like oh I want to date someone on a short term basis not like long term and um, that's a problem for me personally okay so specifically your experience on internet dating apps has not been good no usually it takes like for a day and then someone goes the other one okay so, that's my experience and are you ghosting the men or the men ghosting you <laughs> Okay, mostly me, yeah. Mostly you? Yeah. Okay. But it's a me problem. It's a me problem, though. Okay. So tell me more about that. Oof. I think I have high standards, which is bad for dating, too. Especially, like, in the internet. Okay. Yeah. That's very interesting, because these are really hot topics in dating at the moment, yeah. and especially on YouTube, is a lot of men feel that women are overlooking them, mm. and that if a woman were to just... Uh, look a bit more around and also I suppose lower her standards which no one really wants to do but <clears throat> then a woman would have a lot more choice what do you think on that? True, yeah I think especially on internet dating you just kind of look on the looks of the person instead of like the person itself so I think it's better if you meet them in real life than dating like, in the internet okay. What's the biggest problem you're facing in the dating world right now? The online dating apps have uh, given us like a false perception that we can have like a wider reach that um, we actually do. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense, but like we think we have so many options, um, like an abundance of options. Um, but I'm not sure if we actually do. Okay. So yeah. That's very, well, yeah, everyone I speak to, the, one of the first things they say often is the apps. Yeah. They're really not liking the apps. Okay, and so you feel that it's a false, yeah, choice that you've got out there that actually you don't have that much. I think it's harder to date because there's just too many options you find. Say you go on a date and it goes really well, in the back of your mind, you're just thinking like, oh, maybe I can find something better um, because I have so many options out there. And then you just keep like rolling, think that you know people just have to be satisfied with like what they have. Like you know, you're never gonna meet like the right like someone who has like a hundred percent of the qualities you want. So you kind of have to decide if you're gonna like settle for like eighty percent or 
75 because there's it's rare but you know someone with like 90 percent might come along but yeah it's i guess individual okay and you were saying about um like you're going on like a date and then maybe there's other options out there these are being presented to you on internet dating or more face-to-face -face approaches or uh more internet dating um definitely on the apps it's just there's just so many people uh it's almost like you're not really seeing them as people but just like they're like just characters yeah yeah in a book. <laughs> yeah just characters just like players yeah how are you going about to meet men or how are men meeting you um finding niche communities that are you know that have a higher concentration of men who read specific books so think reddit but not as cringe or not as um you know slimy hairy that kind of a thing uh unfortunately that was my uh, last resort doing it digitally okay. um but yeah i've met a couple of my ex-boyfriends on tinder hinge bumble worth it but as i age increasingly less worth it okay it's not worth the 50 dollars a month just to sift through and find you know one in the eight thousand eight thousand crowd of men as opposed to you know the one in the twenty thousand um it's also a lot of time swiping in retrospect and i want to do more the more that i age so an hour is a lot to give up it is um, it's a very visual marketplace, I think. It's more suited to men, where a lot of their initial attraction is, is visual, that's how men are wired. Mm -hmm. Whereas women, when I interview them, the number one thing they go for in a man is they start describing personality traits. Yeah, but and we can also read very closely into, I think women are very good at reading personality and character from an image okay. as well. So I, I don't really, you know, I, I don't exhaustively buy into the idea that Tinder is just a marketplace for men and it's geared towards men. It's visual, yes, but it's also, um, you know, you don't get anywhere with a really crappy bio. I mean, women weed that out very quickly as well. We've got our own game and rules on this side. It, it's very easy and simplistic to simply say. Um, sorry, that's my phone. It's easy to say that women are objectified and so on and so forth, but men are also very quickly reduced to the personality traits that we see. I mean, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't evoke some, you know, sense of humour or some indication that you're knowledgeable, then I, I just don't care. In the same way that you know, men might look at a particular bodily figure and think, nope, yes. you know, yes, it's fine. We're all quick to judge, aren't we? I think. I think that's a great thing. First impressions, you can't get around that, um, and you're not alive very long, so. You true. want to be quick to judge, true, very true. selective. Um, yeah, I like, I like this contrast in opinion. It's good, it's good actually. On this ghosting, that's a very big problem that I get from men and questions about that. Um, I've actually had to do a video on it as to why women are doing that. Like, what's your view on that? Why, why are you ghosting men? Ooh, I think sometimes the vibe is just not there. And especially if you're dating, like over the internet, there has to be like a spark or something. So, yeah. Usually it's not there, so. Okay. And how do you generate a vibe, a spark over a text message where 92% of communication is lost? True, yeah. I think it's just like um, similar interests, like music taste, that kind of stuff. That is important to me, so, yeah. What about if a man was cheeky to you? He was like busting your balls over a message, like that would get your attention, wouldn't it? What about uh, if he ghosted you? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that happened to me too, so you kind of have to, I don't know, just have to. Does that make him a more interesting man if he does that to you? Um, yeah, I think so, but it's psychologically like that, so. Yeah. When he withdraws himself or vacuums then? Hmm? When he withdraws himself? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But same other way, if a woman goes to men, it's, they're more likely to be more interested. I think. I think it's just like, psychologically. Mm. Yeah.
Yeah. See, it's in a man's inherent nature to chase, and so if he does the opposite, it's really weird for him to do that. But he may find that the results will start coming. What do you think on that? Mm. Yeah, it depends. It depends <laughs> on the situation. It depends on the man. Yeah, other woman. People want what they cannot have. True. Yeah, that's it. Like, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Another question I get from men a lot is, um, it's going well with a lady, like on text or whatever, and then they get ghosted and they have no idea why. Why, why do women do that? Um, lack of initiative on your part, maybe a red flag. I mean, both of those things encompass a thousand other things within them. There are so many red flags. That, um, I mean, the whole ghosting thing, you know, if you don't know someone that well and they're detached enough to ghost you, then you shouldn't really care, you shouldn't lose sleep over it, it's fine. If it's happening to you all the time, then maybe, you know, look inward, but um, it's, it's, it's a very low stakes game to text. You know, I don't think, and, and actually caring about the fact that you've been ghosted is very, you know, it, it smells of desperation. Mm, yeah, well, it, it really shouldn't. It hurts if they, because they haven't really got anything else. Yeah. But you've got to consider that it's, it's a bit of a cyclical effect. If you treat it like a big thing, then you are repelling women. And if you don't treat it like a big thing, and I get that it may be significant to you, but you can't treat it like a big thing about this. You know, it's the idea of not fooling yourself or deluding yourself into believing something, but realizing that if you genuinely push yourself in the direction of thinking this, you will succeed. It's having faith in that. Um, and certainly not acting like a girl ghosting you is the end of the world. It's very unattractive. that's touching on the uh, women going their own way movement as well as the men going their own way movement which is really championing that you know you don't need anyone and that you can you know, have a great life by yourself and I, I do agree with a lot of that and I think a lot of like the pro independence um, having a great life by yourself is, is good but also um, you know for myself like long-term relationships generally as humans we do benefit from people die of loneliness a lot long uh, less time on the planet so. no of course I, I I really see that as axiomatic but also I do know you know a number of people who are genuinely happy I mean you, you know you meet someone and they say that they're happy and they're not you can smell yeah, it off yeah. them and I think that conventionally we'd like to think that people who do not necessarily steer away from the opposite sex but are not engaged in dating we think of them is kind of missing something integral, but I've, I've met many people who have proved me wrong. And you know what, it's so many of the people that are in relationships and looking for dating, etc., etc., are quite unsatisfied. And at the end of the day, if you know, um, you know, in the stoic sense that you are not happy because on paper you don't want to engage with men, but you, you actually do feel a sense of arrogance within yourself because you're not exposing yourself to a good variety of people, then, then you know what you need to do. You know, there's a there's definitely a limit. I don't I don't think even the people who I don't think there's any such thing as men going their own way and women going their own way. It always comes out eventually, and it's not that black and white. I think social media that gives people some illusion of choice, and another one it's uh, much bigger that maybe people just lost. Um, meaningful of idea of family and you just pretend to be a family something like this and so with social media you're saying about the false sense of choices um so you mean that people are buried in their phones messaging men or women and thinking that they've got an option yeah, to date them but even instagram even tinder any i think any of them so it's uh gives some Really illusion, I don't think it's a real, something real can be from this way, so mm. <laughs> what do you think about this? That's a very good question, I've never been interviewed before. <laughs> um, yes, no, I, I agree with you and I think it, when you're trying to talk to someone on Instagram or internet dating, if they don't message you back, you feel rejected ghosted. and ghosted and you, if you get a lot of that uh, reinforcement again and again and again, it makes you feel very angry. And very bitter and so a lot of comments I get on YouTube from men and women are very negative not about my video but more about the situation <laughs> and they yeah. they're very upset at the opposite sex and blame them for their problems 
Uh, honestly, I, I have no idea what should change uh, in this situation to make it better. What about face-to-face -face authentic conversations? Do you feel that's a better way to date and meet people? Uh, maybe, because uh, when I met my partner, uh, he, we are texted sometime and then we are dated face-to-face. And it was, uh, I cannot say it was a different person, but it was more clear who he is. Mm. Um, so it's uh, actually the really best way. Okay. Yeah. And, and you met on um, social media or on internet dating app? Social media. Did you? Okay, you're messaging <laughs> on each other there. Uh, I always had a close uh, non-public account on Instagram, okay. so he found me on some um, Instagram of Moscow Beauty Salon. Uh, as he said, and uh, just told me, uh, let's be friends. Uh, so I'm very naive, I think. <laughs> <laughs> let's just be friends, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it works. <laughs> okay. So many men would say, what, what did he do differently compared to other men that perhaps were messaging you? Why, why did you pay attention to this man? Um, it's a tough question, but uh, I think he was... Uh, very honest on this time and we had a lot of similar interests interest about uh, job, about uh, life lifestyle, I think some of this reason. Uh, he not trying to ask me to date with him in the second message, oh. so uh, he trying, or I don't know, maybe pretend to, <laughs> to, to know me better before he asked me to go out. It's good. I like this man already. <laughs> I, can, uh, I can introduce you. <laughs> He's playing tournament. He's playing beach volleyball. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's good, that's good. Okay. So despite you not liking social media for dating, it actually worked out well for you. Mm, that's true. Uh, but it's more than unusual way, I'd say. Mm. So I... I actually never, I have never used a dating app or a social media to meet someone. Okay. So it's just the first time. First time. And I think it's unique. <laughs> <laughs> There's not... It's, it, it, it doesn't yeah. say that it's every time and every case, uh, someone's case would be like this. Mm. I mean, I, I teach men how to cold approach. I met my fiance down there on my lunch break Very from sweet. an approach so <laughs> that's how I've gone about it but um, in the 10 years I've been approaching the reaction from women has not changed but society has changed and so a lot of men today um, I say are not approaching nearly as much as they used to in the past especially in the 20 30 year time range because uh, the fear of rejection uh, the brand of being creepy they fear being labeled as a problem and also the feminist movement whilst may have done a lot of good over a longer period of time in the more recent age has become a lot more militant extreme as they obviously try and stay relevant and a lot of men um, have those narratives in their head because it's blasted on our media all the time so they no, think all women are like that I agree um, I think there's an undercurrent of women who are starving for the kind of approach that you know you engaged your wife with um, or fiance um, and you I mean, do you want to be with somebody who's going to react disproportionately to a very gentle approach? I mean, you obviously want to thread a fine needle here, but I think it's, it's not difficult to approach a woman and not be creepy. Just allow her the freedom to walk away without any repercussions. Be gentle, mild, but somewhat somewhat signal that you you also have nothing to lose by approaching her you know I, I think women can really smell desperation from miles away and it's you know if I give too many secrets away as to how to avoid appearing creepy then I'm doing a disservice to women because then the assessment isn't right and yada 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 but um, I'm sure you can look it up yourselves and figure out how to not be creepy but also signal a lack of desperation mm. It is that vibe that comes across, especially in face-to-face -face interactions. Mm. I spe especially at the first five to ten seconds, it's almost like exchanging like value cards. Mm. That's how, how it kind of goes. I think also practice going on dates with women, really understanding that women are not something to be pedestaled that much. Um, we are divine in the abstract, but you know, it's also fun to be around us and 
there's no need to, yeah, I mean, I'm speaking from a place of privilege. I feel as if I don't have to ever feel nervous about cold approaching anyone. I don't have any, I don't ever think that I'm going to be called creepy or nasty or any derogative term. I'm, it's actually received rather well if I do. <laughs> so, and it's, it's, yeah, it's never, it's not a hit or a miss, it's just hits. So. Um, not in an obnoxious way. I think generally women do have that power. Um, but yeah, I mean, high risk, high reward at this point. You know, if other men are not doing it, then you will have women on the street who are hungry for it receive it very, very well. Yes. You know, you kind of see it as a little market. Yes. Yeah. There's less, less men doing it. Less so. competition. Better exactly. for you. It's more refreshing in person. Definitely. I would definitely go on a more likely to go on a date with someone that I meet in real life mm. than someone that I meet on a dating app. Okay, yeah. so like someone like approach you in the street or in a bar or something would be a uh, bit more engaging for you? Yeah, like in a social setting or, yeah. Okay. How are you going to meet guys? I would love to meet people just as I'm walking on the street, right. um, like in places that I where people hang out, yeah, just face to face. I feel that I'm quite approachable okay. and that I would love to meet someone through, just meeting someone through places to hang out, yeah. Okay, interesting. That's really refreshing actually to hear because uh, I know many women have said that they would like to meet men in the same way as long as the approach is, you know, What authentic. do you mean, meet men in the same way? Like, they don't want to go on internet dating apps, they want to meet men, like, face to face. Yeah. Uh, for a guy to be brave enough to go over um, and approach and just to say, hey, you know, I think you look nice and have a conversation from there. Um, well, I think if they want that, they also have to be open to being friendly and not just, like, closing the door on that opportunity straight away. Okay. If they appreciate being out and yeah like if you if you say that you want to meet people out in the open then you have to be open and friendly otherwise just get on the ass yes yeah, yeah. and that's what you're referring to earlier you you hope that you are um, open-minded and that you would be open to oh that. I am are, I am open-minded it's yeah. just um, if I met someone in person then yeah I'm totally open-minded if I meet someone online then I would obviously be a bit more guarded just because uh, I mean, they're both strangers in a sense, yeah. But that person just has like more access to meeting whoever versus meeting someone in person. You build that chemistry from the get-go um, rather than just seeing photos of the other person. Okay. So I teach them how to cold approach, like how we met, mm -hmm. and how that, and for them to uh, start conversations in the street or on the bar. And, yeah. Um, yeah, that's how. That's what I go about that. What's your view on that? Do you think that's good for you? That's what it's, yeah, that's better. It's, it's better. way better. Yeah. Okay. And do, do you appreciate though that it's hard for men who may be thinking about doing that because they fear judgment in society? They fear being creepy. Hundred percent. Yeah. I get that. I don't know if I would like approach a man on the street like that. Yeah, I mean it's different for a woman. It would be awkward if they. It depends because I guess when someone approaches uh, women, they're just basing them off their looks. Yes. Uh, but I guess, I guess that's just like attraction, right? That's like the first thing. Um, but I think you, you just made a very good point there about like, yes, it is based off looks because that's all we've got to go off. Yeah. But also we make assumptions about people as well. So my mind was telling me that when I approached you for this interview that you were going to say no. I don't know why, but my mind was just saying that. Yeah. But actually, you've obviously doing the interview and answering some questions. Yeah. And I think that's it. Like, If you can learn how to control your mind, then you might be able to approach more. But I know many men really struggle with that. I think also the way in which you approach is important too. Yes. I think like um, maybe if your demeanor had been different, I would have said no. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's just... Uh, yeah, just how you approach someone, um, it depends on that, I think, yeah. So when, when you say uh, demeanor, like, what what are you, like, looking for that would you would be open to have a conversation? 
Um, for example, if someone just comes up to me and was like, oh, I just think you're so hot and, you know, I just want to get your number, I'd just be like, I wouldn't be as willing to give them my number if they were like, oh, um, uh, I saw, I don't know, you were holding like a book that was like really interesting or... I think what you're saying is you're basically trying to start a conversation rather than just going straight for the, the number. Yeah, just start a conversation. Um, yeah, just start a conversation. And how uh, would a man approach you that would be good for you? Polite, um, charismatic and confident and just friendly, down to earth, good smile. Okay. Yeah. What's a confident man to you? Someone who knows what he wants, someone who's not indecisive, assertive um, and someone who's willing to fight for an interaction, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So he's brave enough to approach. Of course. Mm. What about if he was nervous? Like, because women are very good at picking up on that. If he was nervous, yeah. well, then practice more. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I actually teach men how to cold approach, how to approach women face to face authentically. Um, and I think it's one thing that a lot of men and women really struggle to get their head around is that it actually requires a lot of practice to get to get good, yes. which is kind of a bit weird and you can view it as weird in that guys would have to do a lot of approaches to then get good so that when they do a pre uh, approach like say their, their girlfriend yes, or yeah, the lovely April they're going to have to be at a good level to be able to for it to go well that you would think oh you know this guy he's really confident he knows what he's doing he's not making a mess of things um, I mean a never say never it really depends on the chemistry and how attractive that person is because if he's nervous and he can play it off then that's a strength, um, but it's not just your charisma, it's also how you present yourself. So if you stumble, then perhaps maybe your attractiveness can get you over the line. Okay. Yeah. So what makes an attractive man, you said, about confidence, what other traits would he have? Someone who is <laughs> like hygienic would be one. Okay. Uh, groomed, you know, dresses well, yeah. So, charismatic is, charisma is one thing, but then also being presented well is another. Yeah, sales 101. <laughs> I mean, I, I met my fiance uh, on the street in Sydney. Oh, really? So I was on my lunch break from work and I saw her. I was like, I have to go speak with her. Oh. And that was several years ago. So I did. Uh, we had a very boring conversation. <laughs> and uh, I told a joke she didn't understand. <laughs> and uh, now we're getting married in February, so... Oh, that's so cute! Yes, oh, so... Congratulations! Thank you. This is story. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, it's going, it's going well, but it's... For a lot of people, it's not easy, especially in dating. A lot of, but a lot of men and women are really struggling at the moment. So I'm pleased you're doing well as well. Oh, you know, I think it's... Um, your life will know uh, ends if someone rejects you on the street. Definitely. It's just a try. Uh, okay, it can be not a, a good try, <laughs> but anyway, it's, uh, I think it's not so serious should be for them to afraid this yes. part. So, they just, it, it, your example is, is a beautiful, and I think people should you know all story uh, like this more. Yes. It's very inspiring. <laughs> What's the biggest challenge you're facing in the dating space right now? I honestly think it's just meeting genuine people, um, okay. maybe people that you connect with, um, having real conversations with, um, I don't know, does that... Yeah, yeah. there's can... plenty to work with there. Yeah. <laughs> so when, when you say meeting genuine people, you feel the current methods of you doing that is not really working out? Yeah, uh, I feel like just even going to a bar and, and just talking, chatting to people is not normal anymore. It's like everything's online, everything's through Instagram or dating apps, so, um, but, which is fine as well, but I guess it'd be nice to have more interactions in like places and bars and stuff. Okay. Yeah. So you would want to meet nice guys in bars who do have the social skills to be able to talk to you? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay. And not be afraid to just come up and have a chat. Um, 
we're all humans at the end of the day. It would okay. be nice to get to know everyone genuinely on that level. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, do you think that that's hard for a man to do in today's society? Um, I don't know. I can't speak for them. But, um, yeah, I think it, it might be a bit daunting because it's not normal anymore. Or it's not considered. I think every generation's different. But I think definitely my generation. <laughs> find it a bit hard. Yeah. Okay. Are you Generation Z? You're um, Z, Z? Z? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm the generation before. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah, but internet dating, well, it just started. Ah, so I was caught by yeah. that. Plenty of fish. That was the first one. And then a few others. But um, yeah, I was I was on really expensive dating apps 10 years ago. Oh, okay. And then I decided to stop doing that and learn how to approach mm. uh, women face to face. So that's yeah. how I met my fiance, who's oh. just our like her on the street. Oh so, my gosh. Yeah, in wow. Sydney. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So it's pretty good. That's, wow, that's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. It is yeah. very rare. But, very I, rare. but I do get it. it. It could be daunting because every girl's different. You might be faced with like people that don't want to talk to you. But um, I get it. I, I, it could be hard, but. There are some girls that wouldn't mind a conversation, so don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, yeah. absolutely. What what kind of signs would a guy look for if, say, you were out or open to conversations? Would you be doing any subtle communication, anything non-verbal that perhaps would indicate that you or other women would be interested in being approached? Maybe like looking around, like if they're constantly like looking around. Yeah. That's probably the biggest indication that they're looking for what's out there. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that would be probably the biggest. Yes. Or like hanging around the bar. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's the establishment there and then, isn't it? Yeah. Because yep. I took a client out there. Oh, and really? Yeah, I was just telling him, you just need to look for women in pairs, yep. sat at the bar and then canvassing the yep. scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's 100%. It. I do that with my girlfriend, so. Okay. Yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier about um, not using the apps and meeting men in a more authentic manner. Have, have you been uh, like cold approached on the street? Um, I suppose like what I did with you, but under different pretenses. Like, has that has that happened in Sydney? It has, yeah, in yeah. Sydney, yeah. Um, and I've only recently been open to it. Um, yeah, I've, I've been on a couple like, ooh, been on a couple brunch dates, um, just because I've been approached on the street. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when you say you recently like became open to that, like, what? Tell me about that, like the change, perhaps. Or? Um, I think it's. Also, who approaches you, sometimes you can get a bit of a weird... I feel like I'm a bit cautious and very wary of... You don't want to meet the wrong person, but that'll be the same in apps as well, so... Um, but I've been more open just on my own journey, I guess, in that sense, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's something my fiancé says to her friends, because they want to, what they want, what she had with me in terms of that interaction. Yeah. And she tells them that they need to be more open-minded yeah. to it, and a lot of women either on autopilot or not will just yeah. have something and then just shoot the guy down and yeah. he may not have done the best approach and he may have accidentally got a bit too close or he may have just started wrong but yeah. I don't know at least trying to give him at least five ten seconds yeah absolutely absolutely I think it's it depends on where that girl is at her what stage she is um, but I was definitely more open-minded when I was um, getting approached um, and that comes naturally I don't think you can force that as well so no I think one thing that people struggle to get their head around is they fail to realise how hard it is for men, but also that if they don't normally do approaching or they're not that confident, they need to practice. And so obviously that's what I teach. And then I suppose people just find it a bit strange that a, gay, a guy may need to do like, I don't know, tens, hundreds of approaches just mm -hmm. to get that skill set in, especially if he's not got the natural social skills. Yeah. And then for the, for the woman, she sees the final end of that, yeah. but doesn't realise that he may have actually done so much before which yeah. is the same as like just swiping hundreds of people on tinder right yeah yeah so that's it's, yeah it's complete, i agree with you yeah i think yeah we definitely need to give more credit to the guys that approach i've actually been more open to them just because i know how much effort it takes to approach someone nowadays um, so even if i do decline i just say thanks for approaching like it's really it's really flattering and it's not a bad thing to be liking someone. I think people think it's of such a big thing, but it's nice to have someone like you or approach you. I think you should think of it as a good thing. And the worst thing that could happen is they reject you and, you know, so what, move on. Next, better, bigger things Absolutely. <laughs> will come along your way. Feminism in the last five to 10 years has got very extreme. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of men 
think that all women have these views. What would you say to that? Um, okay. Um, well, I'm here just uh, one year. And here, I would say the feminism is much stronger than in Russia now. Okay. So, uh, I've heard a lot of story here how strong it is. So, I don't think that every woman or a huge amount of women uh, on this side. But it's a new era, it's a new epoch. Should, we cannot do anything with this. <laughs> Maybe it would uh, gonna be worse uh, someday. But yeah, mm. we just have to be um, flexible and adaptive. I mean, both in the men and women. So, yes. It's just one way. It's very interesting you say that because a lot of men who live in Western societies feel that they need to go overseas mm -hmm. to meet more feminine women. I mean, my fiance is um, not Australian. Well, she is, but she's also from somewhere else. So she is very feminine. I would say the same for Russia. My uh, ex-Russian girlfriend, she was from Penza. And when I asked her what was her life objective, she said she wanted to be beautiful and to be a woman. That was her life objective. And I really liked that. I thought, you don't hear that in Western societies. Would and you accept this uh, view of your lifestyle? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whatever she wanted to be, I was like, yeah, cool, that sounds good. Probably. Yes. Do you feel that those like militant feminist streams are helping women in today's society? Oh, oh look, um, that's a tough question. Um, I don't, I think it's, I think everyone's overcomplicating dating a bit too much. I think if you like the guy, if you like the girl, like whether or not, it's just, it should be simple. You shouldn't be so complex. Like you shouldn't have to think about it. Like um, we're all humans, we want to be loved. Like I don't, I think we need to take away from those, like all those around us. Oh, what about this? What about that? Um, or so you'll never get anywhere. Um, just go with what you believe and what you want to do um, and I think that's the best thing to be genuine to yourself. Do, do you feel that that is very Russian, that, that, that kind of attitude for women to, to, to be, be just beautiful and, uh, and feminine and be a woman? Oh, I would not say it like this. I think in Russia now people, people, women, <laughs> um, so much tired of this uh, you that you should be just beautiful and when you're trying to go on I don't know IT sphere it uh, would be a lot of tricks in the beginning because not much people would believe that you are smart at the same time okay yeah. so uh, but anyway uh, I think women in Russia now much more um, than just a beautiful woman <laughs> but they're still feminine. Um, I would say 18 per 80 percent. Yeah. Yes. You can still be feminine and have a job and do these things. You know? Yeah, and you can be you can be a feminist, uh, feminist as well at the same time. Just because uh, I would say in Russia it's always um, just something black or white. They have no somewhere in the middle. The, some any sh shades of um, any events or, or any so they are uh, only uh, true feminism or true feminism. So okay. <laughs> no one between. And I like what you said about like just just give it a go because you'll find that women aren't all bad. And I think a lot of guys that comment on my YouTube they either are having no interactions with women or very little and therefore they're just kind of getting swept up with what's being put out on social media and unfortunately they are migrating more towards the, the incel area or, or just disliking women. But I, I think it's very superficial, they're, they're not deep down that, it's just more of like a little defense mechanism and that if they did spend the time you know, with you know, someone like yourself, just a lovely conversation, that would literally just within five minutes they'd have a completely different view of the world. I think also have something to offer in conversation. You can very quickly signal to a woman that you are interested in XYZ. I mean, think about the, thing that, the things that women you know, respect in men. I respect someone well-read, but signaling some indication that you have your life together, get a job, do things that are kind of adjacent to, to dating, that 
really elevate you as a top property on the market and you know you've got less to lose and also what's the worst that can happen you know you approach a woman she calls you creepy then what you know there's no arrest you're happy to live your life you the same way exactly there's, there's really the loss is, is minimal I mean you're not putting yourself I'm assuming that you're not encouraging you know men to do anything at work or anything that's no. genuinely risky but you know there's a market out there and and there's not competition then now's the time to get a strike yeah that's <laughs> to right. strike <laughs> right, here's your window well, that's good that's good Okay, well there you have it, and I'm interested in your thoughts. What did you think of the video? Was it too long? Was it too short? Please put that down in the comments as I was wanting to try something new for this video, uh, and I'm dying in this humidity. It is a very hot summer's day here in Sydney. But coming to my thoughts, and what do I think about all of this, and I try and just keep things uh, simple as I can, um, women have advanced a lot, right, over the last hundred years. And particularly in the last few decades. And I think that's great. Women being educated, having free choice, choosing whatever career they want to do, uh, dating whoever they want, I think that's great. And certainly, uh, speaking from my own experience, I've personally benefited from women being in really uh, high up positions of society, whether it be um, in medicine or accounting or consulting or property. Um, there, are, there are women at all echelons of, of the working world um, and in society, and I think that's great. Um, that's fantastic. And we're certainly not going to be going back to the days of where women can't get an education or they're not allowed to go to university. Uh, we are where we are, and I think that's a really, really good thing. And on the expectation element to all of this, women are naturally going to want to get the best life partner that they can find. And I don't think that's a unique thing to women. I think it's a human thing as well. We all naturally want to get and achieve the best that we can get in whatever pursuit of life that we're interested in. So as men, what do we do with all of this? Well, most of you watching this are men, and if your dating life isn't where you want it to be, um, it's crap, it's going nowhere, then the main question I have to ask you is what can you do to improve it? What can you do to make improvements to yourself, okay? And this is exactly the questions that I asked myself 11 years ago because my dating life was crap. I didn't look like this. Uh, I had glasses, I was geeky, I would get one or two phone numbers a year, go on one date that would go nowhere, um, and I was definitely at the bottom tier of men in the dating market. And what I did is a journey of self-improvement. Um, the first thing I wanted to do was like, right, cold approach, that's the way for me, that's what I want to do. Uh, I've had enough of online dating, I'm paying loads of money, it's going nowhere. What can I do? So I went out and I learned cold approach and I spent years doing that. At the same time, shortly after my boot camp, I'm then focusing on my fashion, my fitness, my personality, my career, uh, and I'm building all of this primarily for myself and then secondary, my dating life, okay? I just wanted to get more confident. I wanted to be able to have conversations with people. Um, I will learn cold approach to just bring myself out of my shell and also it has benefits of your dating life as well. So that is what I would say is, hopefully you've enjoyed this video um, and, and garnered some views, but put those now to one side as a guy and think, right, what can I do, okay? And if you can improve and control and change everything that you can within your sphere of influence and then present that back to the dating market, that is all you can do. Um, and I guarantee you will get more results from women and more interest. And if there is a woman and she is saying to you in your best form, no, this isn't for me, uh, you are not a surgeon or you don't earn a million dollars a year, then fine, just leave, that's fine. Um, she's clearly got very high expectations. We wish her well with her views and good luck. I have heard that from some women that I've dated early on who then didn't want to see me anymore, but generally very few, okay? So all, these women are not all walking around with these expectations. So yeah, as a guy, focus on yourself. Um, thanks for watching the video. Um, and yeah, that's it. If you would like to see the next video, uh, asking men why is dating so difficult in 2024, then stay right here as it is uh, coming up next a few weeks after the published date of this. And if you enjoyed this interview and some of my insights 
uh, that I've been sharing, then please subscribe to the channel and stay up to date because I have many more interviews coming up. But until uh, another time and hopefully a cooler Sydney, uh, I will see you on the next video.